Hi everyone. So, um, this is just going to be a little video about some things that I got for myself on my birthday. Some some things that I did on my birthday, um, and some presents that I got from family members and stuff like that. Um, I know there's a theme going around uh, of different videos where people are talking about past lives and past life theories and how it all works. Um, I want to address that in a, a separate video, but I did want to say <laughs> that um, right around my birthday, like, what was it, the 9th? And my birthday is the 13th. So a couple days before my birthday, I got myself a past life reading from A Broom in the Moon. And I do want to kind of do a, a, a topic separately on that. So look for that in the near future. I did do a video last Thursday on the Fair Folk, um, the Will of the Wisp, the Fairy Horde or Fairy Host, um, and a few of the other fair folk that are associated with the dead. And that video did not go through for me. And I did not realize it till just recently that you cannot see that video. I can see it, but you can't. Um, so I'm going to see if I can figure out what's going on with that video. If I can't, then I'll just redo it. But it took like half an hour, and I don't feel like redoing it tonight. So maybe tomorrow if 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 it doesn't if I don't figure out what's going on with it then I will just have to redo it um, good grief my undershirt is showing <laughs> okay um, alright so a couple of things that I wanted to show you that I got for my birthday is I got this um, dream catcher and I don't generally work with these. These just never really felt like like that I should work with them. But this is a gift from one of my mother's friends. And it's purple, which is my favorite color. Um, I don't know how she knew that. I don't think my mother told her. And she just, I think this woman must be very intuitive because she just kind of picked up on the kind of stuff I'm interested in. Sorry, puppies. I think, oh, there is a cat outside. If you don't hear that meowing outside, oh, they're going to go crazy. My dogs are going to go crazy. There's a cat. All right. Um, so there you go. It's got one. It's They're all heart-shaped, so but there are three little, little hearts hanging here. And the the feathers are dyed purple. Um, and this is not this is not really made out of natural materials, which I would have preferred. But it it still is purple, which is my favorite. And purple is particularly good for certain kinds of dreams. And I just hang this from a nail over my bed. Okay, so I showed you that. There's that. What else did I get? Oh, like I said, purple is my favorite color. This is a, a lavender, a vanilla lavender candle, and I will be putting. Mm, goodness, that smells good. I will be putting little um, lavender flower buds in here. Oops, 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 okay. It's vanilla lavender. Uh, yeah, vanilla lavender. It smells more like lavender than anything else. Um, just that. My mother got that for me. Um, let me see what else. My sister got me some books, and I ordered a few books for myself. This is my favorite poet. Vyslava Zimborska, and it's just a collected and new poems by her. Um, my favorite one of hers is 
On Death Without Exaggeration. And if you haven't read it, I suggest that you look it up. I can't see if it's in here. Let me look at the table of contents. Uh, on death without exaggeration. No? Well, it might not, it might be one that isn't in here. <laughs> and it's just my favorite of hers. That's okay. Oh, nothing's perfect. Um, she also did um, View with a Grain of Sand. Oh, here it is, On Death Without Exaggeration. They're getting into something, but I don't want to deal with them right now. It's probably nothing really bad. Sounds like plastic. Hey, 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 hey! No, no, no! No. Well, that didn't work. <laughs> um, what did I say, 188? From 80? 188. On death without exaggeration. It can't take a joke, find a star, make a bridge. It knows nothing about weaving, mining, farming, building ships, or baking cakes. I just, I just love how that, how that is. Let's uh, see if you can read that. And it's, it's a new one. Um, I think she's been writing for a while, but this is a new collection. Let's see, yeah. And if you are interested in poetry, I would suggest that you get at least um, one of her books. If, if not, you can find her um, on the internet. Oh, and I got my hair dyed. I don't know if you can see. It is a very intense red and the lighting is not great in here but I can I think you can see on the top that it is red oh I love red um, on the bottom it's it's more of a, a dark dark red and then it kind of turns brown on, on the bottom because my natural hair color is is a, a dark brown but I think if I get it trimmed then most of it will just be red and if I if I dye it like maybe one more time, then I'll have really nice red hair. I love red. Also, I love black too. But I dyed my hair black a while ago, uh, two years ago when I um, got back from the hospital. I dyed my hair black, and I just couldn't get rid of it. So black dye is extremely difficult to get out of your hair. So if you dye your hair black, um, you you will keep it for years, for years and years. <laughs> All right, and there's that. And I got Freedom's Landing from Anne McCaffrey, who happens to be one of my favorite science fiction authors. I I I tend to read um, women science fiction authors. Um, Ursula K. Le Guin, Anne McCaffrey, um, and now, now I'm drawing a blank. Oh, good grief. She wrote, um, He, She, and It, but I can't seem to remember her name right now. Oh, goodness. Okay, it doesn't matter, though. Um, I just, I love science fiction, and I, I love particularly science fiction by uh, women writers. Madeline Longo, I suppose, would be consider considered science fiction. She wrote A, a Wrinkle in Time, um, a Stitch in Time, um, Many Waters, An Acceptable Time, which is one of my favorites. Um, and I got this book for myself, In the Chinks of the World Machine, Feminism and Science Fiction. And yes, I am a feminist, and that does not mean that I hate men. And that does not even necessarily mean that I want women to completely run the world the way, the way we run things now, uh, in a political sense. Uh, though, 
I suppose I would consider myself a radical feminist. That upsets some people, but, you know, I have very particular ideas of what matriarchy means to me and what it would look like. And um, I also, you know, spend a lot of time uh, contemplating uh, feminist spirituality or uh, goddess worship, um, obviously. I am a goddess worshiper, so that's a really big part of my life. And just so you all know, that's that's just the way I am. I probably won't be doing a whole lot of talk about uh, feminist themes on this channel, um, but I will be, you know, talking about goddess themes, so they might they might mesh together. Um, I've got. This, an anthology of modern Irish poetry. I love poetry, that's pretty much self-evident. Um, this is a thick, thick book. I'm... There. <laughs> I'm going to be doing a challenge next week, a reading challenge next week, and um, anyone can do it with me. And I can't remember right now where I got the idea from. Um... I follow a lot of uh, booktubers <laughs> uh, on YouTube, uh, people who have uh, blogs about uh, different books that they're reviewing or reading, um, and people who, whose channels are dedicated to books. Um, I know Amanda Pearl has has a book channel, and a few other people that I can't remember right now. Um, but I will be starting my own after this channel uh, gets a few more subscribers. I'm, I'm going to say 100 subscribers just because that's a pretty good even number and I think I'm about halfway there now. Um, so when we reach 100, I will be starting a new channel on just, just books, just reading books and reviews of books and some of them will probably be um, spiritually based books but I'll probably keep those to this channel. Um, most of them will be fantasy and science fiction, probably memoirs. I like those too. Some historical fiction. Um, what else do I read? Poetry anthologies, obviously. Um, trying to think of what else do I read? Maybe some nonfiction in there. Um, mostly science-y type stuff. Um, I'm really into robots right now. Um, and the, the the singularity event, um, how how technology is progressing and how um, technology is or assumed that technology will one day um, kind of rise and we will rise with it until uh, we cannot tell the difference or that there is such a very little difference between ourselves and our technologies as extensions of ourselves. Um, so it's like, you know, cyborg technology, um, computer chips, um, all that kind of stuff that's still kind of sci-fi, but is very quickly becoming real life science um, discovery and study. Um, okay, that's that. I got a few books from the library for myself. I love books. I just do. Um, this is The Andromeda Strain by Michael Crichton. Crichton? I haven't read it yet. I read Prey by him, and I thought that was a pretty interesting book. So, And this is, um, I believe, considered a classic. There was a book, no, a movie made of this, so I decided I wanted to read it. Um, this is Tanith Lee, Saint Fire. This is also a library book. Um, this this is about um, it's a, uh, I guess an alternate Italy, and uh, there are four books, and they are kind of themed around the the elements: uh, you know, fire, water, earth, air. The first one uh, was water and I don't remember right now what that book was called, but
but this is the second book, um, Saint Fire, and this particular character <laughs> is uh, based on uh, Saint Joan of Arc, and I thought that would be interesting reading. And, oh, I really, really, really wanted to show you this one. Practical Magic. The book. Mm -hmm. I definitely, definitely, definitely uh, recommend that if you have not read this book, you should do it. You should do so. You should really read this book. Um, I think the, the major theme of this book is looking at love, particularly romantic love, but also the love between sisters and, and family members. Um, and and uh, also, also romantic love, but love as a universal force, like a force of nature, like um, like earth is and fire is and air and water. So I guess I guess you could call it spirit, but in, in this it, it's love, um, and how it's really not something that you should play with. You wouldn't play with any of the other elements. You should not play with love. It is um, depicted in this book as something that's very raw and wild, of, of like a, a wild elemental power, um, a force of nature. And and it's it's a really po poetic book. Um, even like the first couple pages. Um, there is a very subtle rhyme scheme, and I didn't really pick that up until I started reading it out loud to myself, but there is a subtle rhyme scheme to the, I'd say, the first couple pages, um, if not the first chapter. Um, and it's kind of divided into sections and not chapters, so there are no like real chapters to this book. Um, what page am I on right now? I want to say I'm on like around page 75 right now, and there are about 285 words, uh, pages in this book. So I'm kind of, you know, early on into the book. Um, but definitely, I, I would recommend that you read it. Um, if you watched the movie, it's, it's much more subtle than the movie. Uh, it's, it's sort of a magical realism book. So it isn't as flashy as the movie is. Um, and I, I got th these from my sister. These are just uh, notebooks, but I'm going to use them for as like spiritual devotional books. And I was wondering if anyone could tell me um, if you've come across any um, like goddess-centered or nature-centered devotional type books. Um, I I really haven't. I mean, I've come across like the the Goddess Companion and some some books that are um, like a Goddess a Day type books, but that's not exactly what I'm looking for. I'm looking some for something that's more of like a spiritual guided journal, um, and either pagan based or nature based or goddess based, and you know anything that is generally. Um, alternative spirituality, I guess, um, as opposed to, like, something that is uh, centered on the Abrahamic faiths. Uh, there's nothing wrong with those. I've used them for most of my life, those kind of devotionals, but I would like something that is more uh, divine feminine centered. Um, I don't know if such a thing exists, if you've heard of such a thing. If there are books you would like to recommend to me that might interest me about, um, that has kind of like a devotional type uh, feel to it, or a journal type, guided journal type book, uh, please let me know. If there is no such thing, then I'm just probably going to have to make one. <laughs> um, I've been thinking about that for for a while now and looking for something like that. Let me see what else I have here. Excuse me, that is not a very nice view of me. Sorry. Okay. Um, the Last Unicorn. This is the first time I've ever seen this video. 
I know. I feel like I've been missing out until just recently. And my sister got this for my birthday. And I believe there's a book that this is based on. The Last Unicorn. It's really something. Um, I don't know if I want to give away too much. But um, this is obviously about the last unicorn. And um, she she gets transformed into a human woman. And part of it is about her trying to remember herself and the specific tasks that she wants to accomplish while she is in a human form. Um, it's it, I think it's deeply spiritual. And um, I really enjoyed watching it. The only issue that I had with it is that... Um, the sorcerer is the good guy, and the witch is the bad guy. Um, and I'm not sure why that was. That was that was a little bit irritating, that the witch is the bad person in this movie. I guess it's okay. I mean, I don't mind it that much, but it was the only thing that really kind of annoyed me uh, about this. Let's see, what else do we have? I showed you practical magic. I showed you my notebooks. Let's see. Um, there's another one of Alice Hoffman here on Earth, and I think this is her, her newest one. Um, it's also a, a love theme. It's a love story, but it's um, more about a down-to-earth type of love. It's not about... Um, Oh, like deeply spiritual soulmate type stuff. It's more, um, if you've read Weathering Heights, it, it seems to be kind of like that. Maybe not as dark, but something like that. Uh, where love is still fierce and strong, but um, more practical, I guess. More down to earth, more... Um, here on earth. I <laughs> um, don't know what else I want to say about that, but really I would suggest you read any of Alice Hoffman's books. She, she deals with spiritual um, principles in very lyrical, very subtle, very um, storytelling type ways <laughs> that, that are interesting and not like preachy or uh, too philosophical and her writing is very um, it's like almost like you could sing to it <laughs> um, there's that and I showed you these oh goodness I have so much stuff here alright and I have the Poisonwood Bible which I have yet to read I did read the, the Bean Trees by the same author this is Barbara King's King's over. Um, I read the Bean Trees by her, um, but I haven't read this one. And this one I think was first, and it is considered a modern classic. So I'm gonna read it. Um, there's that. And I got this book for myself. This is I bought. Um, the Moon is a Harsh Mistress, and this is Robert Heinlein. Heinlein. Um, He's one of a very few number of science fiction authors that have a libertarian, um, non-authoritarian bent. Um, a lot of other authors, some other authors have done the, the sort of anarchist utopia type books. Um, the, the Dispossessed by Ursula K. Le Guin comes to mind. Um, but most books seem, seem to me that the dystopias, everything starts to go wrong when the central power kind of destabilizes and falls away, then everything just kind of goes crazy and mob rule and chaos. Um, but this, I believe, is about a colony on the moon that revolts against the people of Earth because of some really serious um, 
abuses to these people um, because they are on the moon and separate from uh, earth society, earth culture. Um, so they get they get neglected and they get um, generally a, a not treated well. So this is about a sort of libertarian type rebellion. Um, and I, I'm really interested in reading this. And I generally don't read science fiction by men, but I make a few exceptions for some of the um, the greats, the, the classic writers. Um, I, I have some issues with how Heinlein approaches the, the topic of sexuality and um, it doesn't fit too well with me, some of his uh, philosophical um, philosophical lines of when it comes to um, particularly to women and women's sexuality and, uh, well, sexuality in general, but generally, mostly, to do with uh, women. And, but I suppose I'm making an exception for him because this is something that I'm interested in as uh, having a libertarian ph philosophy. Um, what else? I also make exception for uh, Isaac Asimov though his female characters seem more to be like uh, representations of particular philosophies, like, like he's trying to um, learn a, or uh, discover a, a particular philosophy through, through the character. And they are not so much personalities in themselves, which, which I find unfortunate. Um, they, they just seem to be lacking in personality, but they are like philosophical symbols, um, not even symbols, um, images. They're, they're like stick images of particular philosophical ideas, not um, characters in their own right. But um, I, I read Asimov beca because of the... Um, the robots, basically. I just, I, um, I love Daniel. I really do. He, and ironically, even though he is a robot, he is one of the most uh, fleshed out characters in Isaac Asimov's um, books. And I think he also, um, Asimov, had some difficulty with, with, a. Uh, with characterization, although um, when I say that, I just mean that characterization kind of takes a, a second second place to the world building and the, the ph philosophical ideas that he wants to uh, investigate and discover for, through, through writing. Um, so I'm not saying that they are horrible stick figure characters, but um, they are not as important as the story that um, Asimov is telling. Um, and I, I tend to be a character-driven reader. So <laughs> um, it probably says something about how good Asimov really is that I enjoy reading his material, even though his characters are not necessarily the focus of his writing, uh, when I really like character-driven plot. Um, his is a more idea-driven plot, but I still, I make exception for him. So I think that says something about how well he actually created his, um, his stories. There's that, Robert A. Heinlein, The Moon is a Harsh Mistress. Um, that and what else? What else? What else? I showed you that. Hava. This is Hava. The story of Eve. This is obviously me coming from my feminist standpoint, uh, being interested in this kind of reading. Um, there are a few books um, that are fictional biographies, I suppose, of Eve. 
Now, this one is, is one I haven't read yet, um, and I'm really interested in, in seeing how this goes. This is a, a, a Christian fiction novel, um, so there's going to be a lot of, um, I suppose, Christian theology in here. But I'm really interested in how Eve is going to be represented in this book. This whole book is about her, so it's it's pretty thick too. Let me see how many pages are in here. 366 pages. Well, that's the acknowledgement. So 365 pages. 365. That's interesting. Um, so I'm going to read this by Tosca Lee. Tosca Lee. I'm going to read, that's from the library. And here's another Alice Hoffman from the library, Blackbird House. And I believe this is like the second part of Practical Magic or the second book in the, in the I don't know if it's a trilogy or series on, on witchy people. <laughs> um, and I really like how she handles the, the whole concept of magic and what it means to be a witch, and um, also the whole uh, idea of the way she represents love as a natural force that, that needs to be respected and not played with. And I think that is all I'm going to show you, and this video is incredibly long, and I'm sorry about that. I'm sorry. I didn't mean for it to be this long. I'll sign off now, and in the future, I will talk about uh, the past life reading that I got from A Room in the Moon, uh, because I know a lot of people are talking about past lives recently, and past life theory. So I want to I wanna put in my personal experience with uh, A Room in the Moon and how that turned out for me, and then some of my ideas of uh, what past lives are about. Um, yeah, I'm going to talk a little bit more about that in a in the next video. And then if I can't figure out what is going on with the video on the Fair Folk, I will just have to redo it. And I'll probably have that done tomorrow. So that's the end of this. And I will say all stars shine on your paths.